I, um, my favorite part of that entire story is the time that I spent playing with Nolan. Um, uh, my older son Ryan and I are super close. We like all the same things. We're science nerds, we're gaming nerds, we're beer nerds. We are exactly, like, we are very much the same person. Nolan and I, Nolan has a lot of different interests than, than I do. He's way more athletic than I am. Uh, he's just not as cerebral as I am, and I have struggled his entire life to find things that we can uh, communicate through and, and these things that we can have in common. And one of the things that has always provided really wonderful common ground for us has been gaming. Um, and it's games like Magic, and games like Button Men, and Battle Lore, and uh, um, Munchkin, and Small World. Like, um, and it was the joy that I had playing games with him that kind of sat in the back of my head when Felicia Day and I were talking about developing our show Tabletop. Um, I used to be on a show called Star Trek. <laughs> I know, you heard a song about it earlier. And this year, Star Trek turns 25 years old. I have been more successful in not killing myself than Star Trek has. Um, and, um, and I've been meeting a lot of people uh, going to conventions to sort of celebrate Star Trek. And, uh, I, I have heard consistently from people that are around my age that they watched Star Trek with their parents when they were teenagers, and the reason that they watched Star Trek with their parents was that their parents were fans of the original Star Trek series, they were sort of science fiction fans in general, and they enjoyed, like they wanted to have a thing to do with their kids, they were looking for commonality with their kids, so they told their kids, look, there's a kid on, on, on this show, and, and, and that gave the kids sort of a connecting character, a person to whom they could relate and sort of experience the show through. And I hear from these kids that they were weird and they were really smart and they were uh, sort of like, just didn't really fit in anywhere. And they could really identify with the character Wesley Crusher that I played on Star Trek because of that. And it gave them this thing that they could do with their parents. And uh, you know, I have just pushed two teenagers out of the nest. They're uh, they're they're 21 and 23 now, and um, I'm convinced that there's an evolutionary uh, thing that happens that makes teenagers fuckers um, <laughs> from about 16 to 19, so that we as their parents don't feel bad about throwing them out. <laughs> like, fine, you're so smart, go. <laughs> you're going to complain about will be ready. Um, but there's this thing, there's this thing where, like, we all have something that ties us to our parents. There's a thing that creates that bridge that allows us, when, like, we're done being teenagers, to, like, walk back across that bridge and do that thing where we apologize to our parents and they go, it's okay, I knew this would happen someday. And, uh, and then we sort of go on. And Star Trek was that bridge for a generation of kids. And now they're using it the same way with their children, uh, like the titular next generation, the way their parents did with them. And that's what I did with gaming with both of my kids, but especially with Nolan. And uh, when, when we were developing Tabletop, I said, I just want to make this show that's going to make gaming accessible to people. I want to show people by example that it's awesome, that it's fun, that it doesn't have to be competitive, that it's not weird, that gamers are not antisocial weirdos who can't make eye contact when they play with you, and, and that this is a wonderful family activity. And according to the feedback I've gotten, we have been successful in that, uh, in that endeavor. And I hear from parents who show their kids tabletop and are now playing Settlers of Catan with their children. Um, and I met some kids here at Emerald City uh, Comic Con uh, earlier this year, and uh, I was talking about tabletop, and one of these kids, he was like nine, and I, he said, so what games do you, are you going to play on your, on your show? And I said, well, we're going to use like, some classic games, uh, like Alhambra, and some newer games, um, like Elder Sign. Then, of course, we're going to play Settlers of Catan. And the minute I said Settlers of Catan, he and his sister, who were roughly the same age, they high-fived each other, and they were like, we love that game! <laughs> and I was so excited 
um, that we were going to be communicating to uh, this new generation of kids um, what, why we are all here this weekend. Uh, and, uh, and, and I'm just, I, I guess my point in all of this uh, is, is to, to make the point that I make all the time. Gaming really matters, you guys. What we do is awesome, and we have a responsibility as gamers to be awesome gamers with the people that we play so that they will be awesome gamers with other gamers, so there will be more gamers so that PAX could expand to like, oh, I don't know, Australia. <laughs> When you play games, don't be a dick. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Paul and Storm.